Welcome back to the Lackluster channel. As you know, most of the videos that I review are submitted by viewers. Often the video is recorded from the civilian side, so the video can be shaky, very quiet, or at worst, filmed vertically. Whenever somebody submits something to me, I always ask, do you have the body cam footage? And more than 90% of the time the answer is no, and that's usually because they don't know how to obtain the body cam footage. So today I'm going to show you guys the three most common ways to obtain body cam footage and everything else that you should be requesting. But first, it's important to understand that each state's laws are different. Privacy rights, victims' rights, and many other exemptions may prohibit the release of the records, or may cause them to be heavily censored. So at the end of this, if you still need help obtaining your footage, my email is in the description. Feel free to reach out, I'll help you get it for free and possibly even share your story on this channel. The first good resource for each state's open records and eavesdropping laws is ncls.org. That website will be linked down below. So let's discuss what we should be requesting. Not all agencies have body cams or dash cams, so it's important to request everything, even if they don't have it. Body cam footage is great, but it doesn't always tell the whole story. When making an open records request or a FOIA request, the following should be included. Number one, all officers' names and badge numbers that were involved Involved in the incident. Number two, all body cam footage from every officer involved. Number three, all dash cam footage from each vehicle on scene. Number four, any 911 or non emergency call recordings related to the incident. Number five, recorded dispatch and radio traffic. Be sure to request three to five minutes before and after the incident. Number six, all written reports from every officer that was present. Be sure to request copies of the field interview notebooks from each officer on scene. Finally, any video, audio, picture, or notes taken on an officer's personal device, including phone, during the incident. This right here is a good starting list. If I've left something out, let me know down in the comment section. Next, we'll go over the three most common ways to request a record. Number one is an open records or FOIA request. Two is through discovery, and three is through a subpoena deuces tecum. The first one is most common. An open records request or a FOIA request can be submitted by anyone to any government agency. Most police departments or municipalities have a website that allows us to file an electronic request and should have a link to their fee schedule as well. If not, requests can be made in person or by fax or mail. The forms, whether electronic or on paper, are pretty straightforward. When filling them out, be as specific as possible. It's common for record rooms to admit anything they can, but they will rarely hand over something that you don't request. Duh. Fill out the necessary parts, click send, hand deliver, or lick a stamp. Again, the laws are different in each state, so the response time requirements may vary. If they won't release the records to you because it's under an open investigation, you still have two options. The next two methods only apply if you're involved in an active court case. If you've hired a lawyer, then they should be charging you tons of money to do this. But if you haven't, or you want to make their job easy and ensure that they're being proficient, Here's method number two, discovery. Discovery is a pretrial procedure where you can obtain evidence from the other parties. There are many ways discovery can occur, but the most common way that I've personally used is by going to the courthouse and finding the prosecutor's office. Some courthouses even have a discovery office that focuses on disseminating evidence to each party. Write up your request, including everything we discussed in part one, and turn it into the prosecutor or discovery office. It's important to note that they might not have everything that you're requesting, because they might not have entered it into evidence, even if the record exists. For example, on a recent speeding ticket I beat, the prosecutor's office did not have the dispatch recording or certificates of service for the radar gun, because they knew that those two pieces of evidence could, and did, work against their case. You can click that link to see how I beat the case. If what you're requesting is in evidence, it will be delivered to you. If it's not in evidence, or they're failing to comply, the next step is subpoena duces tecum. A subpoena duces tecum, or a subpoena for production of evidence, is a court summons ordering the recipient to appear before the court and produce evidence for use at a hearing or trial. Just note that the summons is used by various different names in different jurisdictions, and sometimes if you say, I need a subpoena duces tecum, they're not going to know what the heck you're talking about. But if you're persistent, they'll figure it out find it for you. Just let them know what you're trying to do. The form itself is similar to the open records request from earlier. In my case, after filling it out, a court date was made for the following week and I appeared before the judge with the prosecutor to review the request. Now the ball's in the judge's court. They can either approve it or deny it. If denied, you probably need to hire an attorney. And I am not an attorney, and nothing on this channel should be considered legal advice. I'm only sharing with you my experiences and what has worked for me. If the subpoena is approved, they will order the production of whatever records you've requested and a deadline for when they shall be delivered to you. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but if you still need help, email me. 
My links are down below, and if you know any other way that we can obtain records that we should know about, let us know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps at least one of you, and if you have an incident you'd like me to review, email it, submit it on my website, or through Facebook Messenger. All links are down below. This is probably the time where the body-worn cameras are the most important, not only for the police, but also to the victims of the police. So before you see what I'm about to show you, ask yourself this, what good does a body-worn camera offer if it does not offer police accountability? So here you can see a couple of the officers on scene donning their heavy vests. Now what happens when they put these heavy vests on is it blocks the built-in uniform camera. The heavy vest has no camera of its own. So as these officers are gearing up to go into a potentially hostile situation, it blocks all video evidence of what they're doing. We do have the audio. However, what's the point of a video camera if you can't see the video? Now, going back to the initial interaction that I had with Officer Nelson. Okay, I will be back to rescue if you don't get inside. You're gonna arrest me on my own property for I'm standing up? Okay. I wanted to see what he said about me afterwards. And here's what I got. It's only audio as the lens of the body-worn cameras are being covered by the heavy vest. But this is what we hear from Officer Nelson. After recording this video, I realized that I had left out a portion. Upon receiving the body-worn camera footage, I did not realize that the body-worn cameras would be blocked by the heavy vests. I sent an email to Catherine Wolf to ask why portions of the video had been redacted. This was her reply. The only redactions I made were to 5 seconds of Officer Nelson's video to blur his phone passcode. The rest that is blacked is either the seatbelt over the lens when they are driving, and when they put their heavy vests on, it covers the lens. Officer Nelson muted about 20 seconds of this video. Nothing else is edited. The video picks up at the portion of video that Officer Nelson muted. No longer muted. That was crazy. If someone come out, he's like standing out there with his camera. Thank you. No, that's all. We're going to get out of your hair. No, no, that's okay that we're doing our job, but your neighbor didn't make things very easy for us. I'm, I'm, he, well, I'm sure everybody does, but we're worried about safety of people, and he, he, won't, he just told us to blow smoke, basically. So I'm going to probably cite him for, for uh, interference with public officials. That concludes our video for today. Please subscribe and turn on all notifications so you never miss a video. If you're old here, like, share, comment down below what you think of this interaction and consider a channel membership or merch to further support the channel. If you have an incident you'd like us to review, link it down below or contact us through the social media platforms linked in the description.